Good morning. So today we are going to be finishing off some of our autumn jump start of seeds and today it is the Malope. So we've got two changes for sowing and growing the malope this spring or late winter. Number one is if you're looking for your seeds, they're in the fridge. A bit of chilling I've found helps aid germination. And then number two, we're gonna be putting a light sifting of compost over the seeds this time because I did an experiment last year and I found that both those methods really, really helped seed germination. Now, if you're an autumn jump starter, your seeds will be in the fridge. If you bought them in the January seed shop, I did put a story up about chilling your seeds, but don't worry too much because Neil and I chilled these seeds down for you before we sent them out in your packages. So you are ready to go. Starting with a nice moist seed tray, because the compost was quite dry, and it also means that I can place the seed straight onto the compost and it's nice and moist so that I get to the seed straight away. So here is my envelope. There's the foil inside. You've got loads of seeds in your packet. Now, malope can be a tiny bit more tricky than something like stocks, for example. So rather than sow just one seed per cell, as we've got plenty of seeds, let's double our chances and put two seeds per cell, but in opposite corners. So if they do both germinate and you want to, you can wait until they grow on a bit and then separate them and get them to grow on in 15 cell trays. There we go, one in each corner. I bet they all come up now, we'll have millions. We don't know what to do with them, will we? <laughs> there we go, so I'm just gonna put the rest back in the packet there. And what you could do is you could pop them back in the fridge. So if you do want to sow some more later, you've kept them nicely chilled down. Don't need to stay in the fridge all summer, just until you've decided that you've got enough plants. So here comes the change. I'm just gonna sift some compost over the top, just to keep the seeds nice and moist. Now, if you don't have a sieve, then you can just sprinkle it over with your fingers. You don't want too much. There we go, beautiful. There we go, don't forget your label. Now, I'm not gonna water the tray again. I know I put dry compost on the top, but I'm not gonna water it again because the compost underneath is wet. And then we're gonna add a clear propagator lid and that will trap the moisture. So the water content in the compost will start to evaporate, but it will get trapped by this propagator lid and it will drop down back on top of the dry compost, so it won't stay dry for very long. These propagator lids really help. Heat mats and germinating indoors really dries out the compost super fast, but the propagator lid will help keep that to a minimum. You will have to keep an eye on the watering levels because warm environments do dry the compost out quickly. But as I say, the propagator lid will help minimize that. Next, we're going to sow the rose, and again, you've got millions of seeds in your packet. I do love malope, so this is ideal. So lots of this, if you've got little gaps in your garden, if you've got some winter casualties where some of your plants died, and now you've got some spaces, this will flower well into summer. It's absolutely beautiful, and in the case of the rose, for example, it's just going to give you that big, massive splash of colour, and you're much better sowing something at exactly the right time then struggling with something that should have been sowed in the autumn for example where you know for example like cornflowers they will still germinate they will still grow but they'll be nothing like they would have been if you'd sown them in the autumn but malope for example 
stocks, scabious. We're right on time for those. So that's where I would rather put my effort and then I will be rewarded as soon as they start flowering. Now look, literally in the few moments that is taken to sow these seeds, can you see the condensation already starting to occur underneath the propagator lid? So all of that moisture would have been lost to the atmosphere. The propagator lid's keeping it trapped and around the seed and that will make them really happy and germinate for us. So Malote really like a warm germination period of about 20 degrees. So I'm gonna take my trays up to the house. You can use your heat mat in your greenhouse if you've got it, but I have found, I've tested it for you. Um, germinating just somewhere not too warm in the house absolutely works a treat. They despise cold, wet conditions. So please don't try and germinate them in your greenhouse. And then once germinated, we'll bring them down to the greenhouse, but make sure that you don't overwater them. This is the reason why we didn't sow them in the autumn jump starter because they really would have despised the cold winter conditions that we've had. In the spirit of Blue Peter, here are some that I started five days ago so this is really really good germination you can see i brought them down to the greenhouse i've lifted their propagator lids so they don't overheat but i've not completely removed them and i will take them back up to the house tonight just to acclimatize them to the greenhouse environment but look at this germination isn't that absolutely incredible and we have got the exact same seeds so here's my malopa look <laughs> even after all this time these have been potted on and everything and even after all this time they're still germinating sometimes disturbing the seed tipping them out in the tray so tip the cells out and then put them in the tray can encourage a new flush of germination to occur now don't worry if you can't remember which is which the white have got the green stalks and the rose I've got the rose stalks. Up to the next couple of days, these are the malope. Look at those. They look stunning now. They've been out in all the weather, so they're ready to be planted. And then also my scabious, they're ready to go in as well. I'm gonna put them in next to the stalks, I think. How quickly they grow. These are the malope, and again, 22 centimeters apart. You can also find all the information that you need for sowing and growing malope in your autumn jump starter handbook. So we've got stocks, vanilla, and then malope, and then the sweet peas. Here we go, a few of you have asked if you can see the finished arrangement. So here it is. 